Hey there folks, Toby here from Mac Pro Video. Now while I was doing a video for Drum Lab, I thought it'd just be a nice idea to just do a quick video on uh, drum compositing in general and kind of where it came from. Now compositing sounds in drum production has been around for a while. Now the first examples of this were largely used in corrective applications. So here's a simple example. So I've got a recorded kit here, and the problem is that the kick drum doesn't really have any weight in it. So one way I could solve this would be to uh, grab an oscillator, which is generating a very low subtone around 39 hertz. And what I could do is put a noise gate in front of this. I would then take the noise gate and plug the kick into the side chain. So every time the kick sounds, it'll open the gate, allowing some of that sub through. So let's see how this works. And without a sub. So you can see that technique has uh, solved that problem. Now in the olden days to achieve this effect, uh, you would have needed one of these, one of these, one of these, one of these, and possibly these two guys uh, to figure out how to do it. Now as technology advanced by the 80s, you could buy uh, one of these bad boys, uh, the AMS DMX 1580S. And this unit allowed you to store a sample in the delay line and then trigger that sample uh, via an audio input, very much like you would trigger a gate. And this is pretty much the precursor to modern sampling. Now what this unit actually allowed you to do was composite synthetic drum sounds, maybe made on a synthesizer, with acoustic drum sounds that were recorded onto tape. And to achieve this, all you needed was lots of this, one of these, one of these, one of these, one of these, and these two guys again. Now obviously nowadays, it's a lot easier to composite sample drum sounds with pre-recorded acoustic drums. Now this is down to the fact that most doors feature some sort of audio to MIDI generator. This allows you to capture the transients of your uh, pre-recorded drums and convert them into MIDI. And then you can use that MIDI uh, to trigger any samples you want. Now if your door doesn't have this function, uh, there are plenty of third party applications that can do this for you. Now doing this in Logic is an absolute breeze. All I would do is double click on my uh, kick drum file here. and see the uh, transients here. Come up to factory, audio to MIDI groove template. Uh, I set my parameters up here. And you can see it's picked up the uh, transients. Say use. I come out of here and you can see that Logic has generated a MIDI file of that kick drum pattern. And I could do this for all of my MIDI parts. Here's the uh, snare drum and uh, the uh, hi-hat. Then all that's left to do is assign some samples uh, and run those uh, on top of my drums. So let's have a listen to that. And if I mute the uh, composite samples, you can hear the difference that that's making. Now another form of compositing that's been around for absolutely ages with drums is the concept of parallel processing. And you can think of this as compositing because you're actually layering two uh, separate sounds to achieve an effect. Now I've got some drums here. So nothing remarkable there mix-wise. Now if I send these off to a bus and then run the bus alongside it, and on this bus I have a solid bus comp, and this is pretty much set to nuke. Let's hear what that sounds like uh, together. So there you can hear that the drums sound instantly fatter and kind of more alive. Now parallel compression is really good if you've got to get something out of the door. Uh, project wise, it's got to be done really fast. You haven't got the luxury of time to spend mixing a kit sound uh, to perfection and this can really save your bacon as far as just getting a sound up really quick. Now you may have noticed that this time my original drums are actually being triggered via MIDI and this is coming out of Studio Drummer here with the uh, Garage Kit. Now MIDI started kind of a sound layering revolution purely because it's so simple to do. Now whether it was with early samplers or drum machines that could be triggered via MIDI, it became really easy to uh, stack these sounds 
on top of each other because you have all the trigger information in the MIDI part. You just have to send it to different destinations. So I've got a couple of parts here that I've uh, pre-made just to save time. They're just copies of my original drums. I've just moved the notes up and down to trigger different sounds. So here I've got kind of an effects layer uh, being triggered in damage. Now combined with my original kit, I get quite a nice interesting sound. So just as another example, I've got a different layer here. And this is a sort of slightly more distorted. It's got that nice ringy snare. So let's have a listen to those together. Now we could run uh, all three of those together if we wanted. Now although these techniques are really easy, there can still be some problems that you'll run into. Now these can include uh, phasing issues between samples and also tuning issues between the samples. All drums have a fundamental frequency and if those frequencies are clashing they can uh, sound a bit odd. There's also a timing issue. Now you may have to trawl through hundreds of samples to find the right kind of sounds to merge together. And I think we're probably all guilty of uh, having way too many samples and far too much choice. Now saying that, if you weigh this up against the amount of time it would take to get these kind of sounds using conventional mix methods, you're probably going to save yourself a lot of time in the long run. So that's it for now. You can go and check out the other video for Drum Lab which is a really great sample compositing tool from Native Instruments. My name's Toby and I'll see you later.